Welcome to our latest video on the topic of making salts from acids and metals. This video is suitable for GCSE students. By the end of this video lesson, you should understand that some metals react with acids to form solutions of the metal salt and hydrogen gas. You should also be able to describe the reactions that take place using word equations and be able to explain these reactions in terms of the metal's position in the reactivity series. And finally, you should understand how crystals of these soluble salts could be prepared by these reactions. In our previous lessons in this topic, we've learned that acids are substances that split up into H plus ions or protons when you put them in water. And we've learned that the opposite of an acid is called a base. And if that base dissolves in water, it's classed as an alkali. Now, when an acid and a base or alkali are added together, they cancel each other out and you form a neutral solution. And the reaction is called a neutralization reaction. Now this neutralization reaction can be represented by the following word equation. Acid plus base goes to form a salt plus water. Now neutralization reactions give out heat and they're also therefore classed as exothermic reactions because an exothermic reaction is a reaction that gives out heat to the surroundings. Now in our last video lesson, we learned that salts are chemicals made from acids and in a salt, the hydrogen atoms in the acid are replaced by metal atoms. For example, hydrochloric acid has the chemical formula HCl Sodium chloride is a salt formed from hydrochloric acid and has the formula NaCl. You'll notice that we've replaced the hydrogen in the acid with sodium. Sulfuric acid has the chemical formula H2SO4. A salt formed from sulfuric acid is called a sulfate. So magnesium sulfate is an example of this and has the chemical formula MgSO4. Once again, we've replaced the hydrogen in the acid with a metal. And the last example, we have nitric acid, HNO3, and the salt here is potassium nitrate, because when you have nitric acid, the salt that always forms is a nitrate, and the chemical formula is KNO3. And once again, the hydrogen in the acid has been replaced by metal atoms. Now in our last video lesson, we discussed in detail how to make a salt from the reaction of an acid and an insoluble base. So in other words, a base that is not an alkali. Now this method had essentially three main steps. The first step was to add our insoluble base to our acid and warm it up using a Bunsen burner. And we did this to speed up the reaction. So in our video, we made copper sulfate. So our insoluble base was copper oxide and our acid was sulfuric acid. And we added the copper oxide until it started to stop disappearing. Because when it disappears, it forms a soluble salt. And when the reaction is over, it stops forming the soluble salt, copper sulfate, and starts appearing in the beaker. And as soon as that happened, we realized that all the acid had been neutralized. Now, once the acid had been neutralized, we were able to go to step two, which was to filter off any unreacted insoluble base. So in other words, to filter off the unreacted copper to oxide. Now, we used a filter funnel and filter paper to do this. And the solution that passed through the filter funnel was copper to sulfate and this is a soluble salt. And to obtain crystals of our copper two sulfate, our soluble salt, we evaporated off some of the water by heating the solution in an evaporating basin. And to obtain crystals of this soluble salt, we evaporated around two thirds of the water off by heating with a Bunsen burner. And then we left the remaining water to evaporate slowly by leaving the evaporating basin on a windowsill so that the evaporation could take place slowly over a few days. And that would enable us to have large crystals of copper sulfate. Now, this equation shows the reaction that took place. Copper oxide plus sulfuric acid made the salt, copper sulfate and water. 
Now before we move on to the reaction of acids and metals to form salts, let's test your understanding of what we've covered so far with some practice questions. So read through the questions, pause the video, have a go at them, and then we'll go through the answers. So now let's go for the answers to question one. So for question one, you're asked to complete the following word equations. So sulfuric acid and zinc oxide is going to make zinc sulfate and water. And the reason it's going to form zinc sulfate is because whenever you have sulfuric acid, the salt formed is a sulfate. And because it's zinc oxide, the name of the salt starts with zinc. So it's zinc sulfate and water. And for B, we have nitric acid and magnesium hydroxide. So whenever you have nitric acid, the salt formed is a nitrate. So because it's magnesium hydroxide, it's magnesium nitrate and water. Now for question C, we have hydrochloric acid and potassium oxide. So when you have hydrochloric acid, the salt that forms is a chloride. And because it's potassium oxide, the salt I will have is potassium chloride. And remember the other product is water in all of these because an acid and a base give you a salt and water. And then for D, we have sulfuric acid and sodium hydroxide. So the salt that's going to form here is going to be sodium sulfate because sulfuric acid always makes a sulfate. And the other product is going to be water. And then for question E, we're going to have nitric acid and potassium hydroxide. So that's going to make potassium nitrate because whenever you have nitric acid, the salt that forms is a nitrate, and the other product is again water, because acid and base gives you a salt plus water. And then the last question is sulfuric acid and ammonium hydroxide. So that's gonna make the salt ammonium sulfate, because we have ammonium hydroxide as the base, and we have sulfuric acid, and sulfuric acid is gonna give you a sulfate, so the products are gonna be ammonium sulfate and water. So here's our next two practice questions. So once again, read through the questions, pause the video, have a go at them, and then we'll go for the answers. So question two is asking you to suggest the acids and bases that can be used to make copper chloride. So because it's copper chloride, the acid that you'll need is hydrochloric acid. And because it's copper chloride, the two bases that I could use are copper oxide or copper hydroxide. And remember, a base is a metal oxide or metal hydroxide. And if I'm going to make copper chloride, I need a base that contains copper. So for question B, magnesium sulfate. Any sulfate is made using sulfuric acid. So my acid is sulfuric acid. And the base could be magnesium oxide or magnesium hydroxide because I need a base that contains magnesium. And remember, bases are oxides or hydroxides of metals. So this question is worth two marks. So there's one mark for each correct combination of acid and base. Now question three is asking you the following. It says alkalis are a special type of base. What property do alkalis have that other bases do not have? Well alkalis are soluble bases. Now for this question I'd also accept it if you wrote down that alkalis dissolve in water. So this question is worth one mark and you could either write down they're soluble bases or you could write down they dissolve in water. One mark for that. So we've discussed the fact that salts can be made from the reaction of acids and bases or acids and alkalis. The next way to make a salt is from an acid reacting with a metal. And many metals react with acids to form a salt and hydrogen gas. So instead of getting the salt and water, if you react a metal with an acid, you get a salt and hydrogen gas. And for a metal to react with an acid, it must be more reactive than hydrogen. Now we've discussed previously the reactivity series and you remember that the reactivity series is a list of metals in order of how reactive they are. 
and for comparison we have hydrogen and carbon, two non-metals in this table. Now if the metal is more reactive than hydrogen, a chemical reaction will take place and the hydrogen is displaced from the acid by the metal. Now the salt formed will depend upon the metal and the acid used. For example, if you use hydrochloric acid, you will end up with a metal chloride. If you use sulfuric acid, you will end up with a metal sulfate. And if you use nitric acid, you will end up with a metal nitrate. So an example of this is the reaction of magnesium and hydrochloric acid. Magnesium plus hydrochloric acid makes magnesium chloride and hydrogen gas. And the reason that magnesium reacts with hydrochloric acid is that magnesium is more reactive than hydrogen. And you can see this here in the reactivity series. Magnesium is a lot more reactive than hydrogen, so it will kick out hydrogen from hydrochloric acid and you will form magnesium chloride and hydrogen gas. Now you can see from the reactivity series that the majority of metals here are more reactive than hydrogen. So that means that they would react with acids such as hydrochloric acid, nitric acid and sulfuric acid to form a salt and hydrogen. Metals such as copper, silver and gold that are less reactive than hydrogen would not undergo reactions with acids such as hydrochloric acid, nitric acid and sulfuric acid because they're not able to kick out the hydrogen or displace the hydrogen from the acid as they're less reactive. So now let's carry out an experiment to show how different metals behave in dilute acid. So we have four boiling tubes here filled with sulfuric acid. And in the first one, we put copper in it. And in the second one, we put iron. And in the last two, we put in zinc and magnesium. Now when we add the zinc to the sulfuric acid, we instantly see lots and lots of fizzing and lots and lots of bubbles. And this is because we're producing hydrogen gas along with a soluble salt, zinc sulfate. And you'll notice that the zinc is starting to disappear because it's forming the soluble salt, zinc sulfate. Now when we add the magnesium to the sulfuric acid, we see even more fizzing and also the tube starts to get very hot. The magnesium has already disappeared because magnesium is even more reactive than zinc. And if we put a stopper over the tube, we get a buildup of pressure of the gas and we can test for this with a lighted splint going pop. So this experiment allows us to compare the reactivity of these four metals. Now with copper, no chemical reaction has taken place. We've observed no fizzing and the copper is still in the boiling tube with the acid. It hasn't reacted to form a soluble salt. Now with the iron, we have some fizzing because a chemical reaction is taking place, though it's quite slow. And we're producing hydrogen and we eventually will produce a soluble salt, iron sulfate. With zinc, we've had lots and lots of fizzing because zinc is a more reactive metal than both iron and copper and we produce lots of hydrogen and the zinc metal is disappearing and forming soluble zinc sulfate. And magnesium, the reaction seems to be already finished because we've produced lots of heat. We've formed a soluble salt, magnesium sulfate, and we've had lots of hydrogen gas being produced and already been able to test for it. So in this experiment, we've seen three out of the four metals react with dilute sulfuric acid. And this is because these three metals are more reactive than hydrogen. Magnesium, zinc and iron are all more reactive than hydrogen and therefore can displace hydrogen from the acid. Now from this experiment, we can construct our own reactivity series because we've seen that magnesium is the most reactive here with dilute acid then zinc comes next, then iron, and then copper. So now let's test your understanding of this with some practice questions. So read through the questions, pause the video, have a go with them, and then we'll go for the answers. So now let's go for the answers to question one. These are worth one mark each.
So zinc and hydrochloric acid will make the salt zinc chloride. This is because whenever you have hydrochloric acid, the salt that you get is a chloride. And because it's zinc, it's zinc chloride. And your other product is hydrogen, not water. Because when a metal reacts with an acid, you get a salt and hydrogen. The second one will be calcium chloride and hydrogen because once again it's hydrochloric acid so you get a chloride. So the next one is zinc and sulfuric acid. Now when you have sulfuric acid the salt that forms is a sulfate so my salt is called zinc sulfate and my other product is hydrogen. And for question D we have iron and sulfuric acid so once again the salt that forms will be a sulfate this time it will be iron sulfate and my other product is hydrogen gas again and for question E we have calcium and sulfuric acid so the salt that forms is calcium sulfate and my other product is hydrogen gas So here's our next two practice questions. Read for the questions, pause the video, have a go at them, and then we'll go for the answers. So question two is asking you to explain why magnesium reacts with hydrochloric acid, but copper does not. Now this is a two mark question. So if you said magnesium reacts with hydrochloric acid as it's more reactive than hydrogen and therefore can displace hydrogen from the acid, that gets you one mark. And if you said the copper does not react as it's less reactive than hydrogen and therefore cannot displace hydrogen from the acid, you get the second mark. Now question three is asking to describe a test for hydrogen gas and is a two mark question. So if you said place a lighted splint near the gas, that gets you one mark. And if hydrogen is present, a squeaky pop is heard. A mark for that. So here's our final practice question. Once again, read through the question, pause the video, have a go at it, and then we'll go for the answer. So now let's go through the answer to question four. So this is a six mark question. So the question is asking you to explain how you could obtain crystals of zinc sulfate from the reaction of zinc and dilute acid. So if you said that you add zinc to the acid, you get one mark. And if you had the correct name of the acid that you would need to make zinc sulfate, in other words, sulfuric acid, you get the second mark. And if you said that you use excess zinc to make sure all the acid is reacted, that gets you a third mark. Now, remember you warm the acid to speed up the reaction. And the next stage would be to filter off the unused or unreacted zinc. There's a mark for that. And the zinc sulfate that would go through the filter funnel then needs to be heated. There's a mark for that. To evaporate off around two thirds of the water. A mark for that. And you would then remember leave the evaporating basin on a windowsill for the rest of the water to evaporate to form crystals. So that concludes this video lesson. So after watching this video, you should now understand that some metals react with acids to form solutions of the metal salt and hydrogen gas. You should also be able to describe the reactions that take place using word equations and be able to explain these reactions in terms of the metal's position in the reactivity series. And finally, you should understand how crystals of these soluble salts could be prepared by these reactions. So that concludes this video lesson. So please check out our YouTube channel, Dr. O Chemistry, which has lots of GCSE, AS and A-level videos, and our Twitter site, at Radichemistry.